Hello everyone and welcome to this week's sermon prep. As we're in the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time and our readings are as follows. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 to 5 and 17 to 19. And our song is Psalm 71. Our second reading is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 31 to chapter 13, verse 13. And our gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 to 30. Now, in the Zulu, in the Zulu world, or when Zulus speak, there is an axiom or that says, Ushai um, Wendonzai. This is all is in reference to cattle. When you are using cattle to plow, that the one that is doing the most work, the one that is pulling the most, that is the one that the farmer will always be beating on to make sure that it carries on working while leaving those that are not really putting in as much effort. And that is the reality that we find for our readings, the liturgy of the word uh, this week. It gives us two examples of people who are faithful in their mission. And the first one we find in our first reading, which is Jeremiah. And the second one we find in our gospel reading, which is Jesus. These are two prophets who found themselves in similar situations and had to announce the gospel of God to unwilling listeners. Those who try the most are those who suffer the most. Jeremiah tells us that in the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord came to him and told him that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you and I appointed you as prophet to the nation. He speaks that people will then fight against Jeremiah as he preaches, but they will not prevail against you, for I am with you always, says the Lord. We know how difficult was the preaching of Jeremiah or his mission of prophesying to, 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 to the people back then. How they took total disdain in his message and they wouldn't bother listening to him. And how he saw his own land he, and eventually how he saw the temple where he worshipped God being taken uh, uh, by, by, by those who were their rivals. How he saw his people being taken into in, in, by by being taken by I almost said Belzebud being be taken by Nebuchadnezzar, who was going to make them their slaves. They were removed from their own land and taken into exile. And how Jeremiah time and time again tried to speak this message to the people, but they just would not listen. How it could have hurt him how much it would have been difficult to him. Think of a priest today who's trying to lead his parish in a certain direction, who's trying to convey or convince his people of a certain message, and they just don't understand. They just don't show up. They just don't put in as much effort. How frustrating that could be. And that's the reality that we see with Jeremiah. But there's something that the Lord says that should that probably gave him strength and should be a, a, a point of strength for us as well. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. We understand that all that we do in our mission, God is still with us. And in our Christian journey, God is still with us. And even if we suffer, even if it becomes difficult, we don't give up because God promises to be with us. God promises to see us through and to deliver us as he did with the prophet Jeremiah. 
Our gospel reading, uh, the episode that we have today, uh, we find Jesus enters a synagogue and he, he reads from, from uh, the prophet uh, Isaiah, which is a continuation of the gospel we had. And he closes by saying that this scripture is fulfilled even in your hearing. And we are told that they all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is that not the son of Joseph? And he said to them, I know that you are going to say to me, prophet, heal yourself. Or physician, rather, heal yourself. He's saying that you're going to say that the miracles that have worked elsewhere, you want to see them taking place. I think it's a good thing that the Catholic Church as a rule does, doesn't normally take a priest back to serve at their home parish. They are rather taken uh, somewhere else to meet people they have never met before. I think to a certain extent they are running away from this. That they are going to say, physician, heal yourself. Or they are going to say, but we know that man will see character. We know him growing up. We know how naughty he was. We know the things that he did. We know A, B, C, and D. And that then becomes a stumbling block. People are no longer able to receive the message of God. They are no longer able to receive what God wants to give them because they are allowing the past or the things that they know about that particular person to hinder them, to block them. He's speaking to a people who are not willing to accept him. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. He says that it's whenever you come back to work with people that you have been with before, they don't accept you. You are speaking to a people who cannot look beyond the person that you are. It's the same thing for us even as Catholics, as, as, as Christians, that People are going to say, since when is so and so was such a big Christian? We know all their stories. We know that he, she used to do this and this and this and that and that. We know that one, two, three, and four happened because of her. And things that happened in our past become a hindrance for us to live our Christian life to the fullest. But like as in Jeremiah, God continues to be faithful. God continues to sort of lead us on. And after Jesus said this, uh, the people become very angry. Uh, they were filled with wrath, the gospel tells us. And they rose up and they wanted to put him out of the city. And they led him to a brow of a hill, which was, on which the, the city was built on, that they might throw him down headlong. But somehow God gives them the ability to just pass through them. Because when we are faithful to God, God is able to take care of us. And in our second reading, we are going to have that beautiful poem, as it were, that St. Paul writes, which is also called the Song of Love. That he speaks about the qualities of love, the powers of love, the difference that love makes in our lives. Um, and he tells us that faith, hope, and love abide, but that the greatest of these is love. Whenever we have hope, we need love. Whenever we have faith, we need love. And then after this life, when you and I die and we see God face to face one day, neither will we need faith nor will we need hope. Because faith is when we are we, we, we believe in that which we have not seen. And hope is, is, is hoping that things are going to come right, even if they have not come through. When we are in heaven, we all need both of those. But we will certainly need love. Love endures all things. Love remains until the very end. That is why even now as Christians, we need to continue that virtue and that gift of love. 
we need to be Christians that love. The response to the song says, my mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. And that's what happens when God has brought us through. When like the prophets Jeremiah and Jesus in our gospel, God protects us, God takes care of us. And when we are filled with that love that St. Paul speaks about in our second reading, then our mouth will tell of the salvation of the Lord. We'll go to each person and speak of the great things that God has done for us. That God will be our rock, our constant refuge, a mighty stronghold to save us. So this is what we'll be dealing with uh, this coming Sunday in our liturgy of the word. Uh, I hope that you have a good time until then. And until we meet on that day, you take care and bye-bye.